I think Maryland's kind of cool. Me too, man. That was pretty freaking awesome. We got our mountains to the left. I believe if my geography serves me correctly, the Appalachian Trail is over there. Yeah, it crosses there at Harper's Ferry where we were last night. That was really neat to get all that information from Eric, hey? And Eric, Eric knows his stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> he plays a great tour guide. Man, he was fantastic. <laughs> if he ever gives up his job as a consultant, you know, he can go into touring. If you haven't already and you're going to be in the area, check out the uh, Roots and Rivers Airbnb. You'll thank us for it later. Without a doubt. Check out that rock stone wall. Yep. Well, we're back on the map, dear guys. This is the start of stage five. And we understand that this is a fairly light day, um, but we got a two o'clock start, 2.30 probably. And uh, we were just having too much fun hanging out, doing yoga. I love the story of how you and Eric met. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I want to hear your side, but according to Eric, <laughs> When he moved to Notre Dame to teach in Notre Dame, he was looking for a new yoga studio. Uh-huh. He was going through the pages and he saw the number one listed one, highest recommended, was right here, right? Yeah. The second listed one was right here. Uh-huh. But it had your picture on it. Uh, yeah. And he said, I'm going with that one. <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> That appears to be the correct story. I was not on that side of the story, but that's the story that I have also heard. I love it. And I have to tell you, so my side of the story, he came to the first class and he was late because the studio was on the third floor of a building and he was a little confused as to where to go. And so he comes in, slides in late, practices. I don't know who it is, but at the end of class, he comes up and does one of these numbers. I'm Eric. I'm so sorry I was late. And I was like, he held my hand. Oh. So nice. Very sweet. Oh. So had us, we had each other at hello. That's <laughs> <guess>. awesome. <laughs> and we are here. <laughs> so we got a late start but it was so worth it to chill for a little bit and get a little break we've been pushing so hard so I decided to take a semi day off yeah take a morning off I'll be in each. Oh, check this out. Is that soy? What is that? Soybeans, isn't it? So soybeans, I believe. Nice. I haven't, haven't seen that all trip. This is grass. <laughs> and this is this corn. Is corn. <laughs> From what I understand, often uh, farmers will grow soybeans as a cover crop for corn. You know, they go back and forth between the two for... Rotational crops. Yeah. Entering Burkittsville. This is a cute little place. You gonna take a left up here, Chris. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Check out this building. That's crazy cool. Oh, and the one across the way. These look old. It looks like Liberty Bell there on the, on that, the corner. That church. That church is begging for a picture with the infrared camera. I'm surprised you resist, didn't want to take a picture. Resist. Resist, resist. That urge. We are behind the schedule today. We're riding. We're not taking too many pictures today. And it's 90-something. <laughs> and we sit still in that UV, buddy. You got to have that airflow, don't you? Woo, standing up. It is <laughs> presently 93 degrees. The sun is shining. And we're behind a school bus that's impeding our forward momentum. Look at that. This could be like the middle of England somewhere. Oh, thank the oh, Lord. All right. Let me let Mr. School Bus go by. You're going to follow School Bus. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Uh-uh. Yes, you are. <laughs> Bye-bye, Chris. Dang it. 
<laughs> Seriously, guys, thanks for watching. Stick around. We got a great episode coming to you. Blue, blue skies, awesome weather. We're uh, coming at you from stage five of the Mabder. This is awesome. Power dude. coming on the left. Smells like cow shit around here. Nice catch on that turn. I would have missed it. I almost did. You know, Steve is bad as Jason is with directions. He's turned out to be quite the uh, leader. Oh, well. Well, it just so happens that it's dead gun blatantly obvious on this GPS in front of me. Are you saying a caveman could do it? Well, I'm saying if a caveman knew how to turn a GPS, it wouldn't be hard to follow the yellow line. <laughs> Beautiful. Careful on this curve. <laughs> Dang, Steve's swearing a lot today. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Let me quit it, Steve. <laughs> I'm rolling on Steve. Gravel, gravel, gravel. Oh, shit. There he goes again. Gee, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I had good reason on that one. <laughs> uh. Sucked the seat cushion up my you-know-what. <laughs> <laughs> the sphincter says what? You want me to say what? Like, I don't get it. Wow, this is beautiful though, coming through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you go right ahead. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> come on by me on the left. So Steve, Steve was like, I cut on the inside line, and I said, well, I'm going through then. <laughs> I'm engine breaking down the hill. Me too. Woo, bump, slow down. Damn, something's dead. That was her. Woo, yeah, you see it. Mm-mm-mm. Bum -ba -bum -ba -bum -bum -bum. At your leisure, Steve. No hurry. Hold the line. Hold the line. Come holding. On. <laughs> All right, cut your seamers off. So here we are sitting in this really cool Jeep. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about it. Well, this is a 1949 Willis Jeepster. It was the first civilian Jeep after World War II. So the first edition came out in 1948. This is second edition, 1949. But this was the first Jeep that uh, they, they made for civilians. And uh, this is my, my granddaddy's car. He was a Jeep mechanic in the war. And, uh, and after the war, he had to have himself a Jeepster. This is so cool. So is this the original, only less than 16,000 miles on this? Probably not. <laughs> it's probably a <laughs> hundred. It's probably gone over. over. You know what I mean? That's my guess. So tell me a little bit of the story about this. I understand that um, this is, has made the rounds. This has made the rounds. So this, I don't know where it's a origin story started, started, but I grew up with this living in my granddaddy's garage and um, and he would let me sit in it on special occasions. And so this smell that you smell in this is, is like my childhood, right? And um, so yeah, so my grandfather had it and it's an interesting story because he wanted to find out, before there was social media, he used to take out ads in the local, in the, in, in the national car magazines, in the classifieds and, ha and put it up for sale three times its value. <laughs> And so that people who were into Jeepsters knew he had one and they'd reach out to him and say, man, that is crazy price for that for that vehicle. Right. And then he'd be like, I know, I just wanted to meet more Jeepster owners. And so he developed this friend group of guys who loved Jeepsters that he met through classified ads trying to sell it way too expensive. Yeah. So one of these times where he's listed it at an elevated price. He, somebody calls and offers him his asking price. Oh, wow. And he was just like blown away. And he was thinking, I only did that in order to meet people, but I'm a man of my word. And if they're willing to give me the money, then I got to take it. He starts calling the family members and says, I have to sell, I have to sell Willie. And everyone's like, no, you don't. You can tell them, you know, that you were just elevating the price. And he says, no, I'm out of my word. They offered me the full price. And my aunt Karen was like, give me this guy's name. I'll call him. I'll call him. I'll talk to him. And he's just like, I don't know. He's some Jew from Hollywood. And Karen goes, Spielberg? Yeah, yeah, that's the name. That's the name. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> so DreamWorks shows up at my grandfather's door, ch check in hand 
to buy the Willie three times its value because they needed it for a movie. Wow. The movie never went to never went to theaters. It, it, it stopped before it, it finished. And so Danny DeVito has been in this car. How cool is that? And I hope DeVito, like you got to tell us, right? If you were yeah. actually in this car. Leave a comment if you know anything about this. Yes. So anyway, so then it goes to DreamWorks. It hangs out at DreamWorks for a while. My aunt becomes, my grandfather passes away. And my aunt becomes a pit bull in search of, you know, like just looking for this, getting this car back. So she makes friends with the mechanic at DreamWorks and is tracking it, everything that it's doing, right? Oh, cool. And then he reaches out to her and says, hey, they're selling Willie to Disney. So Willie goes to Disney. And then he's in the movie, The Country Bears with Christopher Walken. And it's funny because it was supposed to be the, it was supposed to be the car that carried the band of bears right. around. But by the time they were finished with costumes, the bears couldn't fit in the car. Oh, no. <laughs> and so they had to get a bus. And there are two scenes in which you can see Willie parked in front of their house. Take about a half hour to bulldozer to the ground. Oh yes. That. So makes a cameo in the movie and then someone on the set wants to buy Willie and the mechanic says, come on, this little girl, this little girl who's like 65, this little girl's been trying to get her daddy's car back, you know, sell it back to her. And so they were such gems. They sold it back to her less than its value. And so here, living in Brunswick, Maryland, he gets to be the uh, star in the Veterans Day Parade, which is, in Brunswick, the longest running Veterans Day Parade in America. Well, what a cool story. Jason, now that you've had your, what, what, what kind of helmet did you get again? This is a Shuey RF-1400. So your former one was an HJC, right? HJC IS Max 2, I believe. And what, what prompted you to buy a new helmet? What did you not like about that? Uh, well, two things. Number one, the Shuey has the Snell rating. The HJC did not. It had the DOT rating. Okay. Um, and secondarily, it was the HJC was just dadgum uncomfortable and heavy. It's uh, a modular. It has the sunscreen, sun visor. Um, it, was, it was a decent helmet, but because it was modular, it was heavier than a full face. Uh huh. And it also, the, the padding on the inside was cut strangely so that the seam on the sides of your ears would cut across your ear. Okay. So on one side, it was causing me after, you know, we, we ride a long ways during the day on some occasions. And after hours of that seam rubbing against your ear, it just starts causing, you know, more pain than you want to endure and okay. headaches and things like that. For you specifically, it was uncomfortable and heavy. Correct. And noisy. Now, and noisy. the noisy most people can get away with because you can put in earplugs or hide behind your windscreen, get a bigger windscreen, things like that. But we're recording audio. So one of my big concerns or big... Um, things I was looking for mm -hmm. is a, a very, very quiet helmet. Okay. So I'm going to put my head, my, my shield down now to, <laughs> to make sure that we are getting uh. quiet audio. Huh. So, so did you get a, did you get a shoey because I have a shoey and my recording was so good? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't why. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I, I did a bunch of YouTube research, you know, like everybody should, mm -hmm. and I had narrowed it down before ever trying them on. I had narrowed it down to three, AGV, Schubert, and Shuey. So I went to the local cycle gear mm -hmm. and tried on some helmets. The AGV was nice. Now the Schubert had Cadillac padding. I'm telling you what, that thing was nice. And it felt good and it was seemed to be um, fairly quiet. And, and I was, and let me say this as well, I was looking for a full face. I was not going to go modular again because weight and noise. Right. So I crossed that off the list. I wasn't even going to shop for it. But the Schubert, was fiddly. Hmm. It had to click and then push and to get the visor up and there was a couple little fiddly things with the venting that I, you know, it just didn't feel right when I put it on and reached up there and tried to do things. Right? Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so then I put on the Shoei, the RF-1400. It immediately was a different fit. 
Hmm. It was. It already felt quieter when hmm. I, you know, when I, when the sales guy was talking to me. Right. 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 So, well, automatically I could hear the muffled tones more. The, the vents were easy to manipulate. The visor was easy to grab. Hmm. Right there in the front, it's got a little clickable, lockable right there in the chin. Uh huh. Um, but the weight is significantly different than a modular in general, but um, significantly lighter than the HKC that I had. Okay. So, and in, and I've had the HKC for three years. It done me okay. I just wanted to upgrade. You know, I wanted something that's quiet, nice. light, and comfortable. Awesome. And and the only downsides you've noticed are. No. I don't have a I don't have a visor, so. and I don't have the ability to lift the chin guard. But that's what you get when you want lighter and quieter. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So far, so good. Now you know it's, we're still in the infancy of myth of the testing. But at this point, even my wife asked, "How's that helmet?" Because you know. Hey, hey, already you've had more eight, ten, twelve-hour days in the saddle than most people do in a year of use. So. I would I would suspect I would suspect. Cool, man. Well, yep. I'm, I'm due for uh, another helmet soon anyway, so I'll uh, be taking a look at yours for sure. Cool. Weighing the options, but I appreciate that. I was and I was really curious. Light, think about a light-colored helmet, too, man. It's 92 degrees, and we are wearing, like, <laughs> heavy jackets. Yeah. It's not winter time. It's Maryland in the summer. Holy man. I bet, see, if you're wearing Gore-Tex, I am wearing Gore-Tex. I am. Goodness s- sakes! That's I am. Right. I am actually sporting a new look for this uh, section of the. Uh, I, I noticed you've gone with a bit of a lavender color. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, well, it's like this. My Honda jacket, which I've had for probably ten or twelve years, mm-hmm. which got me all the way across the United States of America, has outlived its usefulness. <laughs> oh. Um, while it was still holding up, I felt it was time for an upgrade. And you guys know me. I got on Marketplace, found this Climb Badlands jacket. It was a 3XL. I was, oh, man. I was like, there's just no way. This is kind of like meant to be. Well, unfortunately, it was like eight hours away. It was on the way to Tennessee. And I just happened to be going to visit Griff, our buddy Griff. Oh, I remember him from uh, episode, jeez, uh, what was that, 20-something on the tat? The one up here in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went and I got it, and I have since fallen in love with it. Um, the venting on this thing is amazing. There must be like six vents on the front. Wow. Um, it does have the Gore-Tex. Um, it's probably got, and I can't tell you... The amount of padding on this thing, um, or armor, I think is probably a better choice. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying this thing. Well, I'm not really looking forward to it, but I feel really confident that the waterproofability of this thing is going to be far superior than what I had before. Right. Oh, yeah, Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex. But it's got really cool pockets on um, on your chest area, which also has padding on your chest area. Uh-huh. Um, and it's also easy to access when you're driving down the road. So if a, a little rain shower comes up, you can zip them closed real quick. And, uh-huh. and But it's, it's the zippers appear to be waterproof as well. The biggest benefit that I'm enjoying right now is that I'm on a weight loss program because... <laughs> That's all water, though. It's all water weight, exactly. Now, 90 degrees and wearing a long sleeve, but, you know, that that little bit of inconvenience is probably going to be far outweighed the first time you uh, take a dive. Yeah, what do they yeah. say? Dress for the slide, not for the ride. That's right. You know, what was supposed to be a quick... Um, Quick transaction turned into about a 30 minute talk because I found out he was a truck driver and. And he was talking to Steve. And- <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Right, 
finally entered Michaux State Forest. I wonder if that's French. I would expect. I'm There's a lot of silent letters. I only have one thing to say. We. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> so it's supposed to be a really beautiful section of the Mabder, and as you can tell, it definitely fits the bill. light you guys the backlighting is beautiful it's really neat the uh, light coming through the dust oh it's beautiful This is an awesome place. How long has it been here? Um, like 150 years. Wow. You yeah, don't look that old. Don't look that old. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that old. Um, the building's been here probably like 200, but the store itself has been here like more than 150. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So where are you guys from? Going from South Carolina. Seriously? Yeah. So that's why you're so friendly. Down south. That's You're it. Not as friendly as oh, it's, your sweet, it's the sweet tea. Because I ran away with the fair when I was 16 and I traveled the whole way to Florida with Rod Hoffer. They're the ones that did the Spartansburg Fair and really? a couple of spots. Did you really run away with so the fair? Absolutely. So yes, you were a car. I was the gorilla girl first. Gorilla for Palace girl. of Illusions, yeah. Nice. It was all summer. <laughs> I was 16. It was a long time ago, but it was fun. So I dressed in like a bathing suit. There was a guy that was dressed up like a gorilla suit and it was all done with. You know, it was an illusion, obviously. Um, but then I loved it. But do you own this place now? Yes. Yeah. How long have you been? How long have you been over? Um, four years. Oh. Yeah, cool. we bought started. it. Yeah. So I mean, it's a work in progress. We totally it. redo it's it. It's really cool. Mm. Really I see bikes going up here, but I think there's a smaller yeah. bike. That's not the same as yours. Well, a bunch of they, they all kinds come through, but, but there's a trail, there's a motorcycle trail is that what it is? called the Mid-Atlantic Backcountry Discovery Route, um, and it goes from, um, what's the town that it starts in? It starts in um, Damascus, Virginia. Dam Damascus, Virginia, and goes up to uh, Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, I know they come down here and then you see them going back that way. Yep, yep, yep. So, and it, the word has gotten out that the general store is a great place to stop and get a bite there to eat. There you go. Yeah, yeah. there you go, guys. Good to meet you. Have a safe trip. Man, how was dinner? Dinner was fantastic. <laughs> the perks of just being friendly. We, so we had dinner. <laughs> we're just sitting around. Store closes. They pull the drapes down. The film must take time. We're sitting there talking. 
Like, like, the, like the store is closed. They're not letting anybody else in, but they're letting us hang out with them. It's and, crazy. And then we just kind of randomly said, hey, where's a good camping spot? <laughs> and they gave us the name of this campsite and gave us directions and we looked it up and it was 17 minutes away. Then all of a sudden they say, would y'all like to just sleep in the backyard? Camp in our backyard, right? And I'm like, <laughs> for the win? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we would. So this is an example, you guys, of how kindness begets kindness. You know, we come in with an open mind and we're chatting and talking and being nice to them and you know, good karma comes back. Yes, indeed. And this backyard, I mean, there's a fire pit here for us. He's gone to. Get He's actually fire. gone to get us some more firewood, but there's a ton of firewood over there. <laughs> um, so it's just really kind of cool. We're uh, we're really excited. We're blown away. The kindness yeah. of strangers. We say all over America, it's unbelievable. So get out there and make your life an adventure. One more time with the camera. <laughs> so get out there and make your life an adventure. <laughs> what a director. <laughs> Somehow I think I got a into making the outro. There it is. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, guys. <laughs>